turn, turn around there. Dese la vuelta. Dese la vuelta, doctor. Regresese. So you have trouble turning around? Uh -huh. Si, tiene? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Relájese y trate otra vez de caminar. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness, he's yeah. jogging. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> okay, I want you to just stand in front of the fridge. Okay, so you're a very slow walker at this point. Yes. All right. Take one step forward away from the fridge. All right, so your left hip seizes up, does it? Yes, it doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go. Okay, where you go now? That's it. Okay, Sarah, now just turn around and, um, and then come back this way. So the turning around is the, seems to be the, your most difficult task. Yes, it is. This is day four. You've blown us all away with how much you've improved. You must be very happy, eh? Yes, excited. I mean, okay, so let's see how easy it is for you to stand up and turn around on the spot. <laughs> Real easy. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> and so you, so you can, so you can uh, put that walker away now real easy. A lot easier and quicker than you did before. There you go. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> I'm done with that. Do you use a walking stick? Oh, you need your walking stick, do you? Okay. Turn around and come back to me. Okay, that's right. Turn back and go and sit down. I just want to see how you turned when you were asked quickly. Yeah. So, best thing for... Okay, that's good. Do that again, that was good. <laughs>
Yeah, man. Good time. <laughs> He's just showing off now, aren't you? Yeah, I couldn't do that before. See, that's, that's the test. If you put your hands on your head and walk... You have trouble hopping up and down out of a chair? Yes. yes. Can you just stand up now and show me? Alright, so you've got to kick yourself a bit and your right hand's got the tremor. Mm -hmm. um, and your ankles, do they swell? Yes, my ankles swell. My knees will also swell sometimes. Your knees swell too. Um, do you have a pain around your kidney? Yes, yeah, on my right side. Your right kidney? Yes. How long has it been since you've jogged? Uh, probably December-ish. December. I'll just videotape you walking. Are your arms always bent like that? When I get a little stressed or, or frustrated a little bit, more so. Yep. Okay, so you're limping. Yeah. Why, you just explain to me why you're limping. That left knee is sore. Left knee is sore. Pops and binds. Okay, now, can I get you to walk fast to the door and tell me what it feels like. All right, so you can't walk for... difficult. And you definitely wouldn't be able to jog to come back here? No. What would happen if you tried to jog? Uh, I haven't got the balance. Okay, I have got the balance. And, like, your arms are always bent like that, are they? They are since this for the most part. Okay, go and sit down there. Put your arms up in a in a jog fist position and jog up to the door here. Jog. Now back again. Go for it. Go for it. Want to do it again? Can do. Now that you're doing it, feels good, doesn't it? It does. Okay, back again. Now that's a simple little jog you couldn't do yesterday, could you? No. This is only day two. But jog down to the mirrors down there and back again. Relax while you're doing it now. They got a low door there, he has to duck. <laughs> He's so tall. <laughs> Alright, now would you have been able to do that on Sunday before I started treating you? No. So you're much better than. Yes. Yeah. You're happy with it? Yes, very happy. You got any advice for other people? Trying to make a decision about doing the five day program? Definitely do it. Definitely do it. Good on you, mate. Now I'd like to present one of the most outstanding success stories I've ever been involved with. When medical doctors see a kink in the spine of patients they're treating, their training tells them the only way to fix it is to surgically place a steel rod in their spine. After chiropractors do their best to make adjustments to see if such a kink will straighten, they too will consider giving advice about this steel rod surgery. And the reason is, after several years, the vertebrae involved in such a kink begin to grow in the out of alignment kinked shape. In my new BA10 treatment approach, however, I work in a very unique way to program nerves to straighten the spine and reverse the abnormal shape of the kinked vertebra. When I used this technique on Barry Black, his spine straightened out in only four days and his improvement was absolutely remarkable.
name is Barry Black. I have had Parkinson's for 30 years. I have some difficulty walking and getting around and getting up. Walk to me then, Barry. <laughs> right up there, this is day five. Take a walk down the end there. Come with a run like yesterday? Yeah, go on, go a bit faster if you want. <laughs> You're getting a bit, um, a bit cocky now, mate. You... <laughs> right, away you go. Obviously, you're very happy with the improvement, mate. Yes, very happy. Yes. Very happy. Yes. Good on you, mate. Sideways. And you, dis sideways. <laughs> go on. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> I didn't know he was a bit of a smarty pants. <laughs> backwards? Backwards. Backwards too, right oh goodness me. Right oh we get it we got everything this morning. Right oh Compared with Barry Black, my next client clearly shows the vast contrast that can exist between the causes of one patient with those of another, along with how desperately we need my new breed of BA10 health practitioner in the natural health system. Whilst Barry had a severe kink and several misalignments in his skeletal frame, my next client had next to no skeletal abnormalities, but he had severe problems with his throat, his spleen, and his small intestine. This vast difference in causes that brings about virtually the same debilitating symptom end result can only be treated by a practitioner who is fully familiar with the functions of the immune system, all possible autoimmune disorder causal problems, and all the treatments necessary to overcome each individual patient's causal problems personal to them. My next client, Sebash Quatra, came to me so malnourished that often his eyelids were closing as though he was falling asleep as I was talking to him. Sebastian, what age are you? What age? Sorry? 59. Did you sleep good here last night? No. You didn't sleep good? No. Do you normally sleep good at all? No. You don't? Alright. Did they ever find lesions okay, in the test? Let's start with you. No so lesions. With the paperwork? Sorry? Your room? In, um, in the brain or on the spinal cord? Mm -hmm. No lesions. Mm -hmm.
how do you pronounce his name? That saddens me that you're not driven for, your, for yourself, for your own improvement. You've gone to a lot of trouble to come to me. So when I put my effort into to teach you my, my principles that really do work, you have to use them. I don't care how tired you bit your body is. I don't... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. sorry? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And who are you sorry to? Are you sorry to me or are you sorry to yourself? Mm -hmm. Right. The question is, when, how long ago did you come to the decision that it was no use putting effort into living anymore? <laughs> which is the light, which is the fan. <laughs> It's a very short cough because he's lost his lung expansion yes. capabilities. So have a pastry this week. See how you enjoy it. Good? After we left yesterday, did you try to get this to your chest? I did. You tried? How many times? Mm -hmm. Does that hurt? Mm -hmm. Help me. Help me. Pull. Do this one since you worked this one. Mm -hmm. that it's hurting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go, go against the pain. That's the stiff one. Go against the pain. Mm -hmm. yeah, your leg relaxing yeah, against my arm, so I thought... Use your left hand to put that tissue on your right knee. Mm. Very good. Now, now try to move the left wing with your left arm. Push with your left, not your right. up on your legs and push on the ground so you stand proud. You've got to walk to the wheelchair. Left foot first, yes. Stand strong and proud. Five months of hard work to get your factory going. That's it, that's it. Nice big steps. Come on, you're a proud man. You've done a lot of stuff in your life. Now walk properly. Walk.
push up hard. Arms and legs. Arms first. Push up. Push up. There you go. There you go. There you go. Push up. Push up. Push up. Arms and legs. Arms and legs. Push up. Stand nice and proud. <laughs> That's yeah. really good. Shift your leg. Shift your leg. That's it. Now lean forward before you shift your right leg. Lean right forward. You've got to lean right forward. Put your arms forward if you're going to fall backwards. Put your arms forward. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Excellent. 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 That was a good one. You've got your hope and your faith back again, haven't you now? Yes? Yes. Excellent. You've seen your husband, how bad he was on day one, and yeah. now how good he's doing. Yeah. How do you feel about the five to seven day treatment program? It's wonderful. I've not seen anybody having this effect on him. He's gone to uh, many mind control people, meditation camps, he's gone to the silver camp. Yeah. The Jose Silver. So you're his, back in India. You're his son? Yes. You've seen him do all these other treatments yes. and they've been so really good? You're not, not, as good, not as good as this. Not as good as this. He's not the effect of you happy with the treatment that I've given you over the last 12 yeah. days? Very, very, very happy. Now I'd like you to hear the words of an MS patient I treated, Daryl Clark, along with his wife, who made a very interesting observation on whether or not an MRI and lesions has anything at all to do with MS. This testimony, along with the documents I present, on the absolute irrelevance of lesions on an MRI, makes me wonder why somebody hasn't confronted the leaders of the medical profession over this terrible blunder. There is absolutely no proof at all that Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis exist as incurable diseases and somebody needs to confront them about this. Before you came from Canada to here, yeah. you would have felt pretty lost, not knowing what to expect. It's a big step, huge step. Yep. There was a sense inside of me that this was the right thing to do. Right. right. Um, and I, no, and I appreciate everything. It was taking up, really taking a, a leap of faith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I brought it to a couple of men at the church. One in particular said to me, anybody in the Bible that Jesus healed, um, who 
was a leap of faith that they, they had to take. They had to take. Yeah. You know, uh, and when I did all my tests and asked all my questions, did you think that I was like digging in too deep into your life and your thoughts and stuff? No, I welcomed it. You did? I welcomed it. It was, it was something that needed to happen. Um, and then when I did my massage, my massage is definitely not a normal massage, is it? It's totally different. Totally different and it's helped immensely. Right. Yeah, immensely. Now, when I did the strengthening the mind-to-muscle connection, which is a problem in all Parkinson's MS patients, mm -hmm. did you think that was a bit weird? Um, it, was, it was a bit difficult to get my head around initially. Yeah. But it made sense. And it did help, didn't it? It did, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And, and touching certain nerve trigger points um, while we do that treatment, it's very unique, isn't it? It's a unique approach. It's one of my secrets that I don't even write about in my books. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's uh, it's not something that I've I've heard of anyone ever, ever anybody else ever talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, day one when you came here, you could think a thought to try and move your leg, and it just wouldn't move, right? Yeah, that's right. And when we did this particular treatment, that changed that, didn't it? it changes it absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's what's missing. Even in the natural therapy industry, as well as the medical profession, they don't acknowledge that there is a, a, a inability to get your thought to move your muscles when you want to move them. And, and there has to be something specific done, doesn't there? You know that now. Yes. In order to enable that. Yeah, well, I mean, oftentimes you think that, think that, you go, well, it's not happening, so... Where's the, where's the connection? What's missing? Yeah. And that was, that, that that was missing. what was missing. That was what was missing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now, how much improvement do you feel that you've got over this last seven days of treatment? I'd say I'm, conservatively, I'm 75% there. 75% there? 75% there, oh. yeah. Because I, can, because I can walk much better. Yep. And my stamina has improved significantly. Yep. I can sleep better. Yep. And some are, by, are, by the way, are beyond 75%. So I'd say my sleeping pattern... The stomach pain? The stomach pain is 95% there. Wow. Like the odd little twinge. Twinge every now and again. Yeah, every now and again. But, I mean, I was debilitated with it. So the only thing that they used to diagnose me was the brain lesions, yeah. the MRI. Yeah. It was the only thing that Dr. Bell used. In fact, when we went to see him this last je January, a year later, didn't give me another MRI, didn't even ask me to walk, didn't check my pulse, didn't check my neck, zipped, he just, just sat there in the chair. Yeah. And what was interesting, I asked, why are we not doing another MRI? And I, I, I said, what if there's more lesions? And he said, sometimes more lesions doesn't have anything to, to do with the symptoms, so there would be no point. So uh -huh. my question was, okay, so the lesions aren't always associated with the mobility. So how can you diagnose somebody based on lesions when you're saying that doesn't interfere with mobility? So he was kind of contradicting himself. Yeah. We won't do another MRI because it won't make any difference, even if there's lesions, because they may not affect him. So yeah. They may not have anything to do with they, they may this, not. the symptoms you're experiencing anyhow. So when Dr. Bell diagnosed me in September, end of September 2011, all the way till that, which is over a year had passed, he put a he put a doom and gloom death sentence on me, which I did not accept at this level. Yeah, but you did at this level. Yeah, yeah, because he's a doctor. Yeah, he's Dr. Bell. Yeah, but it just but it, whatever it did it so deceived me. Yeah, of 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 uh, of uh, hopelessness. Yeah. Little short steps. Little short steps. Everything is still too tight. It's too it's too tight. Let go. Let go. Let it all drop on the floor. 
Let it drop on the floor. Come on. You've done this before for years. You did it for years. Do it again. A little, little that's that's better. Okay, you still a little, little stop. 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 And stop. Okay? Now. You don't need to do this. Walk towards the unit there, mate. Just take your time. My name is Ross Collins. I'm 46 years of age. I was, I'm from Melbourne. Um, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 1996. And I was ultimately diagnosed by Professor Ed Byrne. He runs a private practice um, in Parkville, or did. Okay. Ross, now what I want to get you to do, mate, is I just want to get you walking. Uh, to get you get you on tape walking around the unit o over to the door and back again will be fine mate just take your time You got an improvement already? I want you to see your walk. Just relax, let all your tensions go. That's good, mate. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Now stand there and take stock. Feel free and love it. Enjoy the walk. Enjoy the walk. Okay. Okay, Ross, day four, you've just had your second chiropractic appointment. How do you feel? Do you hate chiropractors now, mate? I love them. Are you good? You feel good? Good. You're looking straight. Yeah. All right, mate, let's go to the unit then, eh? Just relax, let it go, let, let everything go, and that's great, mate. That's really good. I'm Tiffany Sackis and I was admitted to a Gold Coast Hospital um, just over a week ago. Um, unable to walk, couldn't move and the doctors diagnosed me with MS at that point. Yeah, I'll just get you to stand up and walk over to the corner, over to the weights there and turn around and then walk back to the seat, just on your own, that's it, without mum. Don't trip on that, that's it. Good girl. No, I'm good today, I can walk. <laughs> okay, so some days you have trouble walking? Yeah. Okay, that's good, just take your time. Okay, then just sit down there.
Hi Tiffany. Here. <laughs> you're here? <laughs> yeah. Certainly better than I was last time. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're looking good, girl. Thank you. Yeah, that's Feel good. Better. Your mum's looking good too, isn't she? <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> okay, now just to for a comparison, okay. I'll get you to walk over to that Sure. Walk over that bench again like hang on a Take a walk over to that bench like you did last week. Out of it last week. <laughs> you were out of it last week, weren't you? Certainly Look at you. <laughs> I can walk again. <laughs> you can talk. Do you feel normal? Do you feel like. I do feel. I'm probably 80% on what I was. Like, I'm almost there. You're almost there. Get a bit dizzy and you start to tumble, you can hold on to the wall or the card. Your right red leg sticking to the floor. Right. Right. There you go. Is that the so it's the turning around that you have trouble with, isn't it? See ya. I'm going a good long to keep it dry. Right. And now jog. How long has it been since you've been able to jog like that? I don't even know. About a year. Right. Do it what? Do it again and I'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve seconds. And the other one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You're just showing off now. That's amazing. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Yeah. You weren't able to do that yesterday. Or last week or last month. Or... Yeah. I've so been you walk... on that myself. Jim's walking... Forward. Jim's walking backwards, by the way. <laughs> walking sideways. There we go. So there you go. But look how he turned around. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, very easily. <laughs> Are you happy with what you've learned so far? No. <laughs> He's ecstatic. Yes, I am. Um, my name's Anita Marie Griffith. I come from Deloraine, Tasmania. And my diagnosing uh, specialist was Helen Carsley. Dr. Helen Carsley? Yes, in Hobart, Tasmania, a neurologist. It's made for people with foot drop. So you put that on your, it's attached to your, your shoelace? Yes. When you lift, oh, I see. It comes up. So it's an but elastic it's, cord. Yeah, it's a bungee cord. And you've got a strap around your shoulders. Yeah, that it anchors off. Uh, okay. And it Get it to come around. You're, you're actually you're actually bringing the right leg around. Yes. Right. Now, are you tired at the moment? Are you at your worst or your best, or what is I'd that? I'd say in between, in the middle. About average. Yeah. All right. So as you get tired, does that get tired? that yes. gets worse? Yes. So I bring it out even more, right. and it starts to get really sore in here. So you, you, I see you've got a walking stick. Yeah. Can you throw that out the window and not use it at all? Okay. I have noticed with this foot, um, I'm starting to. Drag your toes. Drag my toes yeah. and trip. 
Now on day one, you couldn't do that, could you? Lifting up to the next step, no, could you? No, I had to go sideways. Sideways and, and one yeah, step at a time, one right? Step at a time. Yeah. This is day seven. Anita's walking really comfortably now, looks like she's pretty much walking normally, really relaxed. You really look relaxed, you know that? Sorry? You really look relaxed. Oh, do I? Yeah. I'd lost all hope. The doctors were telling me I'd be in a wheelchair soon, and that was already happening for um, long distances. I only walk about five metres before I was in pain yep. and was hardly going anywhere or doing anything. And the doctors don't give you any hope. Um, you know, I had no options really as far as medication was concerned and nothing was, nothing was working. Um, doing this kind of course I know is a, is a leap of faith, but because the doctors had given me no hope, I thought, well, I need to take this into my own hands. I need to do something. And I wanted control back of, of my health and my life, so I thought, no, nah, I'm going to give it a go. Um, and you've now got that control yeah, back. Yeah, and I've got that control back. And the secrets of my treatment that I don't want you to discuss with people, mm. they really work, don't they? Oh, they do, they do. Yeah. It's amazing. I can definitely see... Um, how much it's helped, you know, we walk down to the restaurant and back, which is, how far is that? Oh, 500 metres, been longer than that, wouldn't it? Yeah, and I haven't walked that far yeah. in probably, gee, I don't know, two years probably. Okay. Yeah. Tell me your name and the name of the neurologist who diagnosed you. Stephen Nikolovsky. I was diagnosed in June 2003. My neurologist is Professor McLennell. What is your worst symptom? Walking. Walking problems. And tremors? You get tremors in your, in your right leg, don't you, every now and again? Yeah, right. Uh, they tend to... Swap over. Yes. Yeah, swap over. Stephen, now just get you to walk over to those double doors over there and walk back again for me. Do what you did out near the car. Lift, lift your frame up. That's all right. That that was good. Can't open the door of the fridge. A lot of turning involved in that. Then close it.
How many years has it been since you've had to rely on that walking frame? At least two. At least two. Okay. And here you, you haven't used the frame now for three days. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing stuff. So how do you feel now after the five days? It was very good. Good, good one. I enjoyed it. You, you enjoyed it? Yeah. And you recommend it for others? Yes. Yep, good one. Okay, Mum. Oh, now the pressure's on. <laughs> nah, the pressure's not on. What do you reckon, Kate? Uh, I just love your program. I think you've done wonders. I'm going to cry. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing stuff. <laughs> I'm proud of Stephen. <laughs> it's nice to know that it isn't a disease that's eating away at the myelin. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just proud of Stephen. He's done a lot of hard work, but it's nice to know that your treatment does work. Yeah. I'm going to tell every MS patient yep. that I know to come and visit you. Good one. In the last five years that we've had, you know, all the pain and suffering, it's the best thing we've really done. Yep. Now, Herman, yes. you can't jog, can you? No. How long has it been since you've been... I haven't been able to jog for the last four and a half years. At all? At all. And you have trouble walking up and down steps. You can't walk for very long. Right, that's true. All right. So, turn around and go back. Yep, yep. I'm like a robot because my leg is so stiff. And you... the evening of day three, and um, I'm like, no, Dr. Baden, Uncle No, see this. I just came home from work, and he walked around the house, what? Five times. Okay, but, so that's eight. Look what he's doing with his legs. Anybody who thinks that this is a, a scam or a clock or it's not, it's real. It's very real. Mr. Batten is a special man with a special gift. And if you're open to, to healing and believe that you can get better. I haven't been able to do this in four and a half years. I haven't been able to turn around like this. Still got some practice, but normally when I would turn around like this, I'd be on the ground. So I feel good. So but thank you, Noah. Thank you, Jody, for all that you guys are doing. Thank you guys very, very much. Just squat down like this, and I can stay down here now for like a couple seconds or whatever. And I can get up freely. Like even just from doing that. I can feel the blood circulating like through my legs. And, and who is, what is the name of this amazing man? Noel Bat. Dr. Noel Bat. The naturopath from Australia. Good day, mate. <laughs> man, he's a wonderful man. Yep. Before we turned up, how many times did you have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet? At least two, three times. You know, right. Easily. And that was every night? Yeah, every night. And over the course of the five days we've been treating you, that stopped happening, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I haven't had to get them to go to the bathroom, which is great for me because it hasn't disrupted my sleep, so I've been able to get... Uh, what have you got to say to other people who, like your wife, mm -hmm. would be very sceptical about what I offer for treatment? 
watch the videos. What you see on the videos is the real deal. It's the real deal. It's no scam, no no funny stuff. It's it's the real deal. I mean, yep. Yep. it's real. Yep. It's real. That's all I can tell you. Yep. I have to say, I used to be skeptical. <laughs> Come on, sit down here. No longer. Sit down there. This is for all of you. I understand. <laughs> I, when it comes to the internet and the things that are on it, I'm skeptical. Yeah. Real big skeptic. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay because we all are skeptical about certain and you things. Should then I started to read some of your book. I didn't complete it all, but I read a lot of it. And as you know from my library, yep. I have a lot of holistic books and yep. I yep. practice holistic medicine. So he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He's knowledgeable. Yep. So there has to be something about him that's you know that will be able to help my husband. He's not a quack, people. So, he's not a quack. Well, he's a wonderful man. We, he's like family now. No, he. He's a nice guy, anyhow. He's my uncle. <laughs> no. So I first start off when I first got diagnosed with MS. I got all the mercury fillings removed out of my teeth. Did that help? No, nothing significant at all. I feel like my body actually gone in shock. Right. And after that, right. I changed my diet, high protein, low carbohydrates, minimal sugar, yep. and I did that. And it felt like that was working for a while, but still no significant, significant. change, right. none. Right. I was going physical therapy and doing this and doing that and exercising, and still nothing was working. Right. So I was like, okay, I, I have to find something. And then that's when I received the email from that whoever that person was, to tell me about you. Right. So I watched all your videos three, four, five times over and over again. And I was like, okay, I, I have to try. I have to trust you. Like I said, when I saw your videos, I saw a lot of myself in each individual yep. in the videos. Yep. And I was like, okay, I got to try it. Yep. And I called you and I just knew. Yep. You and knew then, that it was going to yeah. work. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Since the advent of the internet, diagnostic information about Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis is being shared abundantly and people are starting to learn the truth that lesions showing on an MRI is in no way a sign that a person has either of these two diseases. In fact, around 50% of the Parkinson's and MS patients who have attended my five-day treatment program who have had an MRI have explained that they had no lesions showing on their MRI. Here are several Parkinson's and MS patients who will confirm this to you. What is the name of the neurologist who carried out your diagnosis? Uh, Pedro Guajardo. It's, uh, he's in Monterrey, Mexico. Now, did he do an MRI on you? Yes, he did. Did he find lesions? No, he didn't see anything abnormal. Uh, nothing uh, abnormal nothing, on your MRI? Nothing abnormal. So then how did he arrive at the um, conclusion that you have Parkinson's disease? He uh, asked me to do a couple of things, like to walk, and he saw my face. He, uh, he concluded that because of the symptoms he was... From the symptoms, was, right. Yes. Can you just say your name? Richard Osborne. Where do you come from? Uh, currently living in Huntsville, Alabama. What have you been diagnosed with? Uh, Parkinson's. And what is the name of the neurologist who carried out that diagnosis? Uh, Dr. Watts. And did he do an MRI? The previous doctor before him had done an MRI. And and did they find lesions? No. No lesions at all? No lesions at all. all right. Could you tell me your full name? Shivika Jofer. Where do you live? Uh, Toronto, Canada. How long have you been in the wheelchair? Two years. What is the name of the neurologist who carried out your diagnosis? Dr. Lee. Did he 
do an MRI to see if you had lesions? He no. took yeah. uh, one MRI when I was diagnosed. At that time in 2008, no lesion no. in the brain. Your first MRI and you had no <laughs> lesions? No. no. How bad were you at that stage? Like she was walking, like holding balls. Holding walls or uh, with a cane. So, right. Then uh, they did another MRI in May. Then they found lesion in the brain. Many lesions? No. Is that, oh, there is a lesion. There is a lesion. Is. And he took another MRI, still lesions increasing. Were they you in a wheelchair at that stage? Yes. Yeah. You... He took another MRI, MRI in January this year, 2010, but it was stable. There was but no lesions? No lesion at all. Not one no, lesion? No, no, no. Okay, so now. Are you able to stand up on your legs and hold your body weight standing? No. You can't. If My name is Alba Galeano. I am 66 years old. And you live in Brooklyn? Yes. And you were diagnosed with Parkinson's disease? April 16, 2009. A general practitioner. The, his name is Albert Rosso. Okay. And your neurologist? It's Dr. Balderrama. And uh, where is he from? Manhattan. Manhattan, okay. Yes. Did either of them do an MRI that showed lesions? Yeah. Where, yeah. Is the, where, did, where is that MRI? Here. It's over there. There is a... It's, it states here, no, no bony destructive lesion uh, is appreciated. No evidence of intracranial mass effect in this patient with tremors. This is a radiology report, East Manhattan Diagnostic Imaging. Yes. Here are some videos now of Parkinson's and MS patients who testify their neurologist didn't even request an MRI to look for lesions, that they made a diagnosis by observing their stiffness and other symptoms that are assumed to be associated with these two in my opinion, imaginary diseases. Uh, Suzanne Jane Lee, I'm 63. Yep. I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's since 2010. I live in Newcastle, Australia. Yep. What was the name of the neurologist who carried out the diagnosis? Initially, I went to Dr. Katakar's rooms. Was there an MRI done? No. So they didn't look for lesions? No. So they just observed your symptoms? and came to the conclusion you had Parkinson's. That's right. All right. And what was the name of the neurologist who carried out that diagnosis? Do you, do you remember the Dr. Elkis. Elkis. Oh, Dr. Elkis. Dr. Elkis? Yeah. Elkis. Yeah. How do you spell that? Elkis. And, uh, did, did, did he do an MRI? No. No, he didn't. So he, he asked me why. So he just made the diagnosis on observation of symptoms. Right. Yeah. And you and I both know that those same symptoms that you have can be experienced by the average person who comes in off the street with really tight muscular system due to ongoing stress. Correct? Yeah. A person can even have numbness and tingling down the side of the face because of really tight neck muscles mm -hmm. and a misaligned C1 or C2, correct? Yeah. Why you can find TMG involved in one side or the other. Diagnosed with Parkinson's when? Approximately last April, 2011. April, okay. Right. So I was then having a physical, and I asked the doctor about it, and he recommended a neuro neurologist. Yep. yep. And so right. I didn't care much for his test, and he walked down the hall and Yep. And then he says, that's what you have, let's start you on medication. So, there was no MRI done? No. Okay.
this is the ninth day of my travel to treat program with you. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have um, been so good to work with. First of all, I would like to get your feedback on what this experience has been like for you. Well, for me personally, it was quite an experience. Um, it was like a challenge for the brain. I was not understanding things the way I needed to interpret it. And so that, that was my, my challenge. Right. Yeah. And the fact that I helped you understand how to deal with the world outside the house and you're thinking about a goal setting and things in the world. It's it's not sort of subjects you would think would be associated with MS, were they? No. Uh, Michael, you're a qualified chiropractor. There's your qualifications there from Palmer. Mm -hmm. um, working with me mm -hmm. to, for the betterment of your wife, what do you feel about the program? H how do you like my treatment program? It's, it's one of a kind. Uh, you're, you're, uh, it's like it teaches you not only um, the, the massage that you do, but it's the mind work. You don't see that anywhere where it's getting to the cause. And it's all about, really? you know, it's all about working on the brain. And no one's doing that. No one's doing no that. One's no one's doing that. You're the only one. Yeah. 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 I mean, her doctor did a little bit of it, you know, but it, you're teaching us all this stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. You teach them how to be, it's like, like an instruction manual for the mind. Right. That's what it is. Right. Yeah. Right. It's an instruction manual right. for the mind. No, it, if you go anywhere else, I, I think you'll, you'll, you'll be wasting your money. You're, you're dead on. You know exactly what to do. Yeah. So if they go anywhere else, if they've got MS and Parkinson's... Yeah, wait, they're wasting their money. They're wasting their, they need to come to me, right? Yeah, they have to come to you. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Mike. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. yeah. So as a chiropractor... Yeah. Did you learn stuff off me that's going to help you in your chiropractic? Oh yeah, definitely. Excellent. Yeah. Righto Jim, day five, this is the end of the treatment. How do you feel? Absolutely fantastic. Good. And uh, you're certainly not sorry you came to do the program? <laughs> not at all. No, I should have found you 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's excellent mate. Have you got any descriptions of how you improve? This little interview on the camera is for, to encourage other people. Well, so if, if you want to feel better with life, I suggest you come and see you. Right. Do the program. I don't know how I, I can put it any plainer. Right. I mean, I, I can't remember, probably I'd have to go back 25 years to say that I felt as good as I feel now, and then I might be exaggerating. See, I might have to go back 35 years even. Goodness. So you feel that much better? I feel that much better. Right. And as a Christian, you, you would probably respect the fact that the six steps of treatment that I use actually come from the Bible. Yeah. So it's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. All right, mate. Um, thank you very much for travelling all the way from uh, Delbert and Broken Hill. Thank you very much. No. Now, Trudy, you've just, we're on day five of the treatment. Um, you didn't have any obvious symptoms for us to film a before video. Um, tell me your name and the name of the neurologist who carried out your diagnosis. My name is Trudy Penman and I was diagnosed originally by Rick Adams at Southport and um, verified by John O'Sullivan in Brisbane. And they're both neurologists? Both neurologists. All right. Um, you're going home in a couple of hours. How do you feel about what we've done? I feel like I've got a new life. You feel like you've got a new life? Yeah. So it's a new woman. Yeah, all right. And you feel a lot better now than when you first turned up? I do. Okay. Now, Mark, um, as Trudy's husband, you've seen her develop the symptoms, and how do you feel about the five days? This morning, it really, it really hit home to see the back so straight. Yeah. After Monday, when it was just like the big curve. Yeah. And, and then this morning, it was just straight as I just couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And, um, you know, and even this morning, she, when she does that, her, her finger's a lot better, a lot yeah. faster yeah. than it was previous yeah. to this week. Yeah. 
All right, guys, thanks for coming. Before we end the video, yep. Trini's done a poem up, and I wanted to read it while we're on camera. Okay, wow. It's a long one. <laughs> it was December 2007 when at 38 I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Mark and I were devastated beyond belief, so to the internet we searched for relief. The biggest medical blunder was what caught our attention, so we made contact with Noel Batten at Warmerin. Noel, who was in America doing treatment, sent us a DVD of his successful clients. To neurologists and doctors we did see, many different drugs we were given with glee. The tremors and rigidity were still present, now with nausea and sleep absent. I showed the DVD to the doctors and chiropractors who said it was not a medical blunder. When contacted by Noel in July this year, the next available time was September, oh dear. The 8th to the 12th of September is a week which I will always remember. <laughs> we left our three kids with family at home and from Wollongong to Warmer and we did Rome. A week we spent with Noel and Kevin Massage, chiropractic and counselling, it, fe it felt like heaven. You taught me to love myself and smile. To be happy and know my stress and traumas are gone a while. Now I can relax and enjoy my new life. Be a loving person to my family and children and a sexy wife. No, you need to know I feel blessed to have met you. Thank you, thank you for what you do. <laughs> thank you so much for putting all that time into that. <laughs> that was excellent. Thank you very much. Goodness me. <laughs> you surprised me, girl. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>